Hey, what's up? All right, so this video is about solving a quadratic equation by completing the square. So I'm going to give an example here, all right? So let's say that I had an equation that was like x squared plus 10x minus 7 equals 0. Okay, so um, if you're familiar with the different ways to solve quadratic equations, you'll, you'll know that there's three ways. You can either try to factor it, you can complete the square or you can use the quadratic equation. So the first thing you want to do is always factoring because you know it's usually the easiest but taking a look at this you can see that it you really are not going to be able to factor this um, this e equation because you know I, I can't think of any factors of 7 that add to make 10 right so what that means I'm gonna have to use completing the square. Now the way you do that is it's sort of you begin by doing something that seems a little bit strange okay you begin by adding a certain number to both sides of the equation okay and but the the number you're going to add is a very particular number and it actually it's gonna be a certain number that's going to do something kind of nice and it's gonna allow you to simplify this equation and be able to solve it so I'm gonna I'm gonna rewrite this equation okay x squared plus 10x minus 7 I'm gonna leave a little space here okay I'm going to say equals zero. Okay, I just rewrote this, but I left a space because I'm going to add something. Turns out, and just go with me here, okay, I'm going to take half, oh, I forgot to put an x. I'm going to take half of this middle coefficient, okay? I'm going to take half of 10, I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to add it to both sides. So I'm going to say it one more time. The first step in completing the square is taking half of the middle coefficient, dividing it by 2, squaring it, and then adding it to both sides. So half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25. So I'm going to go plus 25, plus 25. It seems really arbitrary why I did that, but it's going to make sense in a second why why I did this, okay? Um, now, I just first of all, I want to do like a little side note here, okay? Some of you might be thinking like, what's with this adding numbers randomly, right? How can you get away with that? Aren't you changing the value? No, I'm not because I'm adding it to both sides. I can remember I can do the same thing. This is algebra. I can do the same thing to one side of the equation as, as I do to the other, right? I just added 25 to both sides. I didn't break any rules there. All right. So now that I put this 25 here, I'm going to get rid of this negative 7, okay? So I'm just going to go plus 7, um, plus 7, okay? This is going to go away. So I'm going to rewrite this equation. I have x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 0 plus 25 plus 7 equals 32. Okay, so I just did a little bit of rewriting. Okay, remember, I haven't solved anything yet. All I'm doing is I'm just rewriting this equation in a different form. Turns out that, remember, remember I said it was going to make sense that how I added this 25? Well, this is why it makes sense because now that I have this, I have this 25 here, I can do something very nice. I can actually factor this trinomial into an x plus 5 times an x plus 5. Notice, x plus 5 and x plus 5 are the same. That means that this trinomial is actually a perfect square trinomial, isn't it? By the way, th this makes sense, doesn't it? See, x times x is x squared. I'm going to get a 5x and a 5x, combine like terms, going to get a 10x, and 5 times 5 is 25, right? So if you know you're factoring, this is very simple, okay? Well, see, the fact that x times 5 is the fact that these, these factors are do two factors are the same means that I can actually just rewrite this as x plus 5 squared, right? Because squaring just means something times itself, doesn't it? Right? x plus 5 times itself is just x plus 5 squared. This equals 32. Okay, I'm going to slide down a little bit. Check this out. So what was the whole point of going through this process, right? Well, the point of being able to rewrite this equation like this means that I can actually now take the square root of both sides and actually maybe get somewhere, okay? So watch this. Now that I have this whole equation rewritten in the form of x plus 5 squared equals 32, if I take the square root of both sides of the equation, I can do this. This is algebra, right? Same thing to one side as I do to the other. The square root and the squared kind of cancel out, okay? And then I just have the square root of 32. So I'm going to say that x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 32. So see how I got this x plus 5? See how the squared and the square root canceled each other? And so I just have an x plus 5, right? Because taking the square root of something that's squared just leaves that thing, right? And, and by the way, what, what's with this plus or minus, okay? Well, it turns out that when you take the square root of something um, like this, you actually have to say plus or minus, and that has to do with the fact that um, 
uh, a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is also a positive. So you just have to remember, you, whenever you do the square rooting, you actually have to say plus or minus. And that makes sense, actually, because remember how a quadratic equation actually has two solutions? Um, one of our solutions is going to be um, having to do with this positive 32, or positive root 32, and then one of them is going to be this negative root 32. So, um, but you have to remember that, okay? Because if you only get the problem half right if you don't do that. So check it out. Now it's very simple to solve for x, right? So x is just... Um, uh, negative 5 plus or minus root 32, right? Because, see how I just add, I subtracted the 5 from both sides? I just took this 5, moved it over. Okay, cool. So, that means that if I were to rewrite this in like, um, you know, I would if I were to write what x was, it would basically be negative 5 plus root 32, and I'd put a comma, and I'd say the other solution is uh, just negative 5 minus root 32. So I'm just saying that see how one of these solutions is if I use the positive root, th uh, root 32 and then one of the solutions is if I use the negative root 32. Yeah. Okay. So th th that's where I get these two solutions. What that means is that these are the two values of x that make this original equation true if I were to substitute them in. Notice, these are not very nice numbers, right? Well, that makes sense because this was not a very nice equation to begin with. It was not factorable and so See, the, the fact that it was not factorable t kind of indicated to us that we were not going to get these nice whole number integer values for x, okay? So, yeah, that's basically completing the square. I'm, I'm just going to do kind of a quick recap here because I don't want to just, I don't want people to be confused when you, when you know, by this whole process, right? Because it it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it, all these steps you have to go through. But I'm just going to do a recap, okay? So, recap. Um, I start off with my equation. I go, okay, well, it's not factorable, so I have to use completing the square or quadratic equation, but this video is about completing the square, so that's what I'm going to do. So what I did was I took half of this 10. I took half the middle coefficient, and I squared it, and then I added it to both sides. So I went half of 10 is 5, 5 squared is 25, plus 25, plus 25. And I, and I got rid of this number here because I don't want it over here. I just want this 25 to be here because 25 was the specific number that I actually, that was the only number that I could have added to this x squared plus 10x to turn it into a perfect square that I could then factor into this x plus 5, x plus 5, which then I could rewrite as x plus 5 squared, which then I could take the square root of to get root 32 and get this um, x by itself by just subtracting the 5 from both sides. So it's just kind of, do you see how one thing leads to another? Do you see how ultimately I, I end up with this solution for x? Well, it, I would say um, re-watch this video a couple times or go check out some other videos or something because th this can be really, it's good to see a lot of examples.